what how exploitation is at the very core of capitalism and 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 at and at, and and what makes it as an engine you know uh, exist and 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 and, and still uh, to this day you know um, is has the upper hand or, or you know or, or has the is the motive force of history as it continues to you know move forward to this very day and, and, and will for you know for a, you know for a uh, I don't know nobody really knows you know for an extended period of time but of course there are different forces working you know you know to enlighten being enlightened about that and moving you know to try and change that to turn it you know, to turn that around, right? To to uh, to uh, bring about a different type of uh, you know type of uh, way of living, you know, type of existence, type of uh, you know of, of system, right? To to replace capitalism or to yeah you know, to change that to to end exploitation, but you know as 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 to how that will, will unfold, hold nobody really knows, but you can see, you know the you know the you can have some, you know, kind of, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of things have to do, so you can have some foreshadowing of what, you know, how it may unfold, but anyway, again, I know I have a tendency to... No, 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 no. <laughs> don't cut yourself off. To, to, to Finish your bit. thought. Yeah. Finish your thought. Be comfortable with your thought. Okay. Don't underestimate your contribution. Right. Are you finished? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm done. Okay. Because, I'll tell you, we were just talking about this the other day, I teach a lot in, in different uh, milieus. I, I have worked as a teacher, you know. But I think it's really important that if you if you want people to learn, learning is an active process. You know? And you have to find a way to let people express what they understand because We'd be all very surprised. You're surprised about what you know and what you've seen and what your experiences, you know, brought into your mind. You'd be surprised. The problem is we forget. We're trained to forget. See? And thus, you know, it, it just seems like we just stumble from one thing to another through life. But you'd be surprised how much you've actually accumulated memory through, your, through the course of your life. Just give yourself a chance. Let's start back on the exploitation. Let's start, look, if we're studying the, the history of humankind, we begin with the hunter-gatherer. Before we had animal, animal husbandry, or we had agriculture, people just survived, right? We just went out, we caught something, killed something, plucked some fruit, or plant and, you know, hunters and gatherers. That's what but as people developed human society, we grew into right, a society, the first ancient societies. Now, when I say the first ancient societies, I'm talking about that we know of. Okay? So we're talking about Greek society. We're talking about Roman society. We're talking about Egyptian society. What do these societies have in common? There's one thing that we all have that we should be aware of. Slavery. Say it. Slavery. There you go. That's exactly right. These were all ancient slave societies. And they existed for millennia. For more than millennia. The type of slavery we're talking about was Chattel slavery. It's not very fancy. Remember that term, chattel slavery, because that's the same slavery that was reintroduced in America. We talked about it this film. Chattel slavery simply means that the slave is the property of another person, of an owner or master. Okay. When you have Shadow slavery reproducing itself thousandfold over and over into the millions, then you have what's called a slave society, a society based on slavery, or to be more specific, 
a society that the economic engine of that society is slavery. Okay, now that's the Greek society, the Roman society, the Egyptian society. That's how they. Just using your imagination from what you know, and I know you, each one of you know this answer, but we're going to continue to travel in our circle, right? How did originally people acquire slaves? Capturing them. There you go. I told you you're going to scare yourself. Usually in, the, in a matter of war between tribes or pre-national formations of one sort or another. People were captured, and then they, when they captured the people, they made them into slaves. Okay, so that's how it started. Now, the the type of society after the collapse of the Roman Empire, and a society descended in what they called the Dark Ages. There's another term for the Dark Ages. What are we? What, what is the other term? For Dark Ages, when there were kings and queens, and the church and the state were the same. Medieval? No. Medieval is correct. That is one of the terms. But the system was called the feudal system. Feudal system. And that system was based pretty much on peasantry, on the peasantry being the economic engine of that society as the slave societies just totally collapsed. As they totally collapsed, what you have was a system where you had rampant barbarism, where people just went around physically assaulting and attacking each other. So in order to protect you know, your tribe or your people, people built, I, mean, I know you've seen them, come on, what they built. How do people protect themselves? You know, you know the answer. You want me to come back? No, no, you want me to come back? You want me to come back to you? Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm going to come back to you because I know you you know this answer too, but go ahead. Let, let the young fellow try. Cat? Huh? Castle? That's right. That, the moat and the cat, that, it was just a, a functional thing. If the outside invaders came, they let down the hat, people came into the castle, you're not protected, you take a thing, you shoot at the people from the, you have a certain military advantage. Okay, so then, and this was the, you know, part of this feudal society. So the guy that runs the castle, like, you know, it's nice to run the castle. So that's your, your king or your nobility. And here's where the church, I think, has forever discredited itself as a force to be you know, taken too seriously. The church and the state were one. They were one entity. They worked together. The church actually proclaimed that God had sent the king, for instance, to rule upon the citizens. One has to ask, well, my goodness, God is busy. Did he, he rule? He sent the king in England and in Spain and in France and in Germany? <laughs> But never mind that. The point is, the role that the church played is what's important. It was integral. They were integrated into the military apparatus of the, the whole state. In the womb of feudal society. And I'll just, you know, I'm not going to, well, then it's called a mercantile capitalist, basically. The mercantile, does any, would you like to try it? The mercantile capitalist? Mercantile is from merchants? There you go. Come on, now I knew it. That's exactly right. And, by the way, pirates. <laughs> okay? So through piracy and mercantile trade, having the shipping, you know, the ships go on trade, this group of capitalists became the wealthiest group of capitalists. Well, what, pray tell, was the branch of industry that just set the mercantile capitalists straight to the moon in terms of wealth. What primitive accumulation of capital, what was the capital that they accumulated that made them so rich? 